Today's the day we are doing a rib tenderness test comparison. Chemical with an injection in phosphates versus mechanical with a jacquard versus our control ribs with no changes. I want to get to the bottom of what gives us the best tenderness with the most leeway. So let's get into it. We're going to start with three identical racks of ribs. Now I'm going to treat these like competition ribs because that's the tenderness I'm looking for, which means standard comp trim, removing the membrane, taking it down to a St. Louis cut, and putting it to 10 bones per rack. We're prepping these the night before because that's when the injection needs to go in for me per my competition timeline. Now as far as our injection goes, this is just Cosmo's original pork mixed two bag instructions with an additional tablespoon of his Moisture Magic phosphates. Super simple, nothing crazy, it just wins. As far as how much I put in this rib, the answer is just gonna be however much the rib is willing to take. Keep injecting until you're noticing that most of the injection isn't staying in anymore. At that point we're full, place it over in this tray and it'll go in the fridge for the remainder of the evening. Now since we have our injected rib prepped up, we're gonna go ahead and use our jacquard, which is really just a term for a mechanical device with either a bunch of small blades, this one has circular points on it, to punch holes in meat. I'm gonna go ahead and just go liberally over the top of this entire rack of ribs. To the point where it resembles something more like cube steak. But I've seen some steak cooks do some amazing things with jacquards and tenderness on a steak, so we'll see if it helps with these ribs. Then lastly, of course, we have our control rack that we are doing nothing to, it just got the standard trim. All three of those racks are gonna hang out in our refrigerator, covered up, until the next morning when we fire up our Gravity 980. Now I know in the previous video I said we were gonna use the Dakota, but just to keep variables to a minimum, I know what ribs should cook like best on this Gravity 980, so that's what we're gonna run. We're gonna try something a little different that I've never done before though, using B&B char log. I've ran B&B charcoal through this cooker a ton. I don't expect any differences. I just kinda of wanna know what the fuel efficiency looks like on these char logs, because they're always amazing. I've never ran them in the Gravity. While that gravity is coming up to 320 degrees like normal, again, for consistency's sake, we're gonna season these ribs with two tested and true rubs. Just our Dirty Bird hot straight out of the bag. Now, if you do this out of the bag, make sure you've got a steady hand. Followed by Honey Chipotle Killer B. This combination is so good, I have no reason not to use it. It's just classic barbecue. Just like I do in competition, I'm gonna give these a half an hour to set it on the back, half an hour to set it on the front, and then we're going straight onto our cooker using some B&B &B cherry chunks in that ash pan to give these beautiful color. At the hour mark, we're gonna give these a flip, and I've gotta say, the set that I jacquarded looks absolutely beautiful. These ribs are picture perfect. Now, I don't know if it's just the particular rack that we have in the jacquard or if it's because of the jacquard, but it looks just perfectly even and amazing. A little hit with some spray butter though, and right onto the fronts to get the last 40 minutes. After an hour and 40 to two hours, depending on how you're looking, we're gonna wrap these up super simple, just some parquet butter, some brown sugar, and a little bit of a citrus soda. I needed a liquid, I didn't have apple juice handy, I know the drum cooks love this stuff, so let's give it a shot. And back onto the cooker until it's time to start testing for tenderness. Just because these are all gonna be very different, I'm gonna start checking for tenderness when my internal probe on the injected rack says they're at 204. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because you kinda of gotta know how they need to feel in their different states. So I'm gonna employ a bunch of different techniques from using just the temperature probe, to using my hands to kind of feel these ribs out to determine when I think they're done and tender. Interestingly enough, the injected rack, which is actually the biggest rack of ribs, is the first one I think is done. So we're gonna take it off to let it rest. Not long after, and in this order, the jacquarded rack came off, followed by the control rack. So after a short rest, nothing left to do but cut these up and see how they turned out. All right, here we go. Our rib tenderness test. Control versus mechanical versus chemical. Obviously, there's a lot of variables I can't isolate in this test, but I'm real interested to see how this goes. So let's start with our control rib. Looks 
good to me. Solid bite. Are you carded rib? I need a bite from this side. And our injected rib using Cosmos Q plus some Cosmos Q moisture magic. A little extra phosphate. Here we go. All right, at the end of the day, here are my thoughts. Between the control and the jacarded rib, there really wasn't much of a difference. Although there was one specific difference in that the jacarded rib looked picture perfect. That might have just been the rib that got selected to be jacarded. I don't know, but I'm definitely going to mess with that some more. See if there's any uh, adverse effects to jacarding. If not, it looked really, really pretty. But the tenderness between that and nothing at all, I didn't feel a difference with the bite. Now the injected rib was different. Because it was bigger, I think I probably didn't get it quite as tender, but we're talking just within a hair. However, it was still softer to the bite, which when you're talking KCBS ribs right now, a little bit of a snap with a soft bite is going to score well. If you're talking about at home, push them further, it'll be a soft jelly on the bone rib that you just can't beat. At the end of the day, all of these have their own advantages. I would say if you're new to cooking ribs and you're looking for as much help as you can get, Go with the injection. It'll help buy you some extra tenderizing as well as moisture holding while you learn to cook them. If you're a purist and you don't want to do any of that and you just want to cook them plain, cook them plain. They have a different feel that you have to learn basically with your hands or with your probe as, as you saw me doing out there. And definitely, no matter what you choose, always be experimenting. I'm probably going to try jacarding and injecting next and see what that does. If it does anything at all. But I want to know, so I'm going to find out. Now, if you heard me say phosphate, you're not sure what that is. Meet me over here. Let's go talk about phosphates.